Welcome back to my channel guys. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my food prep. I've never done this before, so I'm totally gonna to wing it. Wait, hang on. I am recording this audio <laughs> and completely unprepared. Okay, I'm just gonna hop straight into it. Broccoli, potato. Hmm, this is not panning out the same way that I wanted to. Tomatoes, more tomatoes, my favorite tomatoes. Um, what? Hang on, slow down video. Now this is a pumpkin. What a huge pumpkin. I have seen tans that look as orange as this one. Here is um, about four to five kilos worth of organic apples, which I brought from the market. They're currently sitting in vinegar and water. According to the internet, which if I've read it on the internet, it's obviously true, duh. <laughs> if you sit your vegetables and fruits in vinegar, it gets rid of, um, uh, really not too sure, but anyway, it does give me the feeling that my apples are much cleaner than when I first took them out of the bag. Oh, look, there's a pear in there as well. There's a pear in there. Vinegar? Oh, right, so this is the part where I actually show you how much vinegar I put inside, but first push the little plug thing down, and that's about, mm, I'd say, what was that? <laughs> about a cup, or was it like a half cup of vinegar? Let's look at my apples again and let me touch them. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my beetroots. Okay, what am I going to do with these beetroots? Well, I'm actually in this video preparing three foods at once. What I'm going to do with beetroot is I am going to roast them. Here, as you can see, I'm cutting off the bottoms and then I'm actually going to roast these beetroot with the skin on because once they're roasted and cooled down a little bit, you can take the skin off. Oh, this is my little compost box. So I put all food scraps in there, which will then go back into the soil. But for now, let me go back to chopping up these beetroots. I've got four of them. I'm going to turn part of the beetroot into some beetroot hummus or beetroot dip. And then the other part of the, hummus, uh, the beetroot, I'm going to turn into some beetroot and quinoa patties. Now you're probably wondering what on earth is this corn doing in here? Well, the corn is going to go in the the next type of food which I'm making, which is going to be corn and kale and feta fritters. Fritters, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm actually gonna roast the corn with the skin on, except for the top part. That's because I feel like if I included the top part that I will probably just burn them. This is not an official procedure. This is just my procedure. Next part is quinoa. This is about mm, three quarters of a cup of quinoa. That will go into the beetroot and quinoa patties. Delicious. To do this, I need to add some water. How much water do I put in it? That looks like about a cup and a bit. We'll keep that on the stove until the quinoa is ready. How long? Probably about 10 minutes, I think. On the left, that's julienne um, sweet potato. I have this special julienning tool. Now this is normal potato and one piece of sweet potato which I could not grate because if I did grate it then I'd probably chop my skin off. This is just being pan fried. The sweet potato is being pan fried in some coconut oil. Next part, what are we doing? We're gonna go and have a little, we're gonna go and prepare the um, the bloody, this is such a long title. They're corn, kale, feta, sweet potato, fritters. That needs a much shorter name because that's very long to say, but that's actually the ingredients of the fritters themselves. So that is corn, which I had roasted, mixing it with the rest of the ingredients. Oh, and I think I actually put a little bit of quinoa in there as well. There's the potatoes. Mix it with your hands. You can mix it with whatever you want, but I like to, I like to touch the food. I don't know why. I just feel like I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I feel more in touch with the food. And then I feel like we're gonna need something to bind it. So I've added some spelt flour. That was about, what was that? That was about a tablespoon. And then making little circles with my hand, patting it with my hand. And um, there we go. It's about the size of my palm. That's gonna end up making about eight to nine patties. Delicious. That's cooking on a low, heat. I'll show you what that looks like at the end of it. Let's get on to the quinoa and beetroot patties. You know how I told you earlier that you can actually rub the skin off once it's done roasting? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Although I very quickly discover that I can't just rub it off with my hands. First of all, it's really hot, so I grab a knife. <laughs> 
If this weren't so fast, it actually looks like a bit of a bloodbath, to be honest. But okay, here's a cheese grater. We're going to use that part, the one that I just showed you, and we're going to grate it. Anyway, I saw one of these gloves that you can buy from the supermarket. You wear the gloves as you grate things, and I kind of wish that I bought one now because this was extremely dangerous. Like, um, am I accidentally going to grate my skin off my hands? I hope not. To all the watchers, viewers, watching this and you're like, Christine, I will never eat your food starting now. That That's totally fair. That is totally fair. I don't blame you. But suffice to say, I didn't cut myself at all. I managed to just grate this beetroot safely. And when I got to the end of it, I just stopped grating it and then chopped it with a knife. This is what it looks like at the end once all the beetroot is grated, moving that into a larger bowl so I can then add the quinoa. Yoo-hoo! Yep, that's the quinoa. I saw a little bit of potato, but that must have been left over from the other dish that I made. So I'm gonna mix that all up together. And then I went out into the garden and also grabbed a little bit of parsley. Yes, why not? Green against red looks very beautiful. It's very fragrant and it's delicious. So why not? Yep, needed the spelt flour because it needs some binding, but oh, and some salt. Salt will bring out the flavors of the beetroot and everything else that I put in there. And eggs, eggs for binding. But by now I'm starting to discover, hmm, this is quite wet. I don't think that it's going to stay together when I put it on the pan. So as I'm mixing this, I'm actually brainstorming a solution. What am I gonna do, Christine? How am I going to bind this? Let me get some oats. So I got the oats and then I put them in the little um, Nutribullet, magic bullet, and then turned it into a powder. That's about a third of a cup. But then I end up doubling that because it, that, that one third wasn't enough. There we go, and now I'm putting it onto the pan. Look how pretty the parsley is. It almost looks like I'm cooking meat patties, but I'm not. This is vegetarian. This is one of my favorite foods, actually. It goes really well with some garlic yogurt dip or tzatziki. You can put it in a charcoal bun, add some guacamole. Mmm. This is the beetroot hummus. That was the earlier roasted beetroot. We've got some parsley again, garlic cloves, lemon, can of chickpeas cumin powder, tahini. We just chuck it all into the magic bullet all together. Yeah, that's me digging out some of the lemon seeds. <laughs> all right, so that all goes into the blender. Then I'm gonna blend it and this is what it's going to end up looking like. I normally pair it with avo on toast or a bit of salad. This is where I got inspo from, from Udara Bali. They have it in a charcoal burger and they have a little bit of mango in there. This is the corn fritter and the beetroot dip, which I also normally have with salad. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any comments or questions, pop them in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do.